Good morning, all. I'm Joseph Dixon, Sr., Chief of Gainesville Fire and Rescue. It is a privilege to welcome you to the 2022 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony. On behalf of our Honorable Mayor Poe, and City Manager Cynthia Curry, members of the commission, every community builder, and each neighbor. We thank the University of Florida for access so that together with you and our partner agencies from across Alachua County, we can gather to remember day, a day on which a heavy blow was struck. Lives were changed forever. Heroes rose and heroes fell. To the first responders lost, we remember. To the civilians lost, we remember. To our service men and women lost, we remember. To our gold and blue star families, we remember. To every soul impacted, we remember. And we'll never forget. Your strength, sacrifice, and courage has been the win in the sails of a concerted effort to remain forever vigilant and deliver justice to those responsible. May God bless and keep you, and may God bless and keep the United States of America. Chief Theus. Thank you. My name is Harold Theus. I'm the Chief of Fire Rescue for Alachua County Fire Rescue. And wonderful words by Chief Dixon. We certainly appreciate and recognize the partnership that we have as a community in Alachua County between the city, all the other municipalities, our law enforcement brothers, sis brothers and sisters, and our fire rescue brothers and sisters. This is a day where we join together as a community and we reflect upon the days that took place uh, 21 years ago, which is hard to believe. It's been 21 years. So today is a very important day for us as we remember, but also a time when we join together in unity. We remember the sacrifices that took place that day of the law enforcement officers, the EMS personnel, the police officers, and also the many civilians that were impacted on that day and were impacted since that day. So if you don't mind, if you would please, if you would stand with me for the presentation of the colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Our turn! Our I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order! Prepare to post colors! Forward! March! Oh. 
At this time, if you would please remain standing, we're honored today to have with us our Chair of County Commissioners, Ms. Mary Helen Wheeler, and also our Commissioner of the City, Harvey Ward. And they will be placing the wreath at this time, so please remain standing. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm Lonnie Scott, Chief of Police, Gainesville Police Department. And I want to take a moment to thank those of you that are here uh, for coming out. Uh, on this occasion, we want to note uh, sacrifices that were made that day by public safety. And it's something that's very pertinent today because in this day and time, when law enforcement is being demonized throughout the country. It's time to remember that when everyone else is running out, when you need someone to help you, the people who have volunteered to put their lives on the line are all those personnel that wear uniforms, both firefighters and law enforcement. Not saying that they are beyond reproach, but it's a reminder that sometimes you have to pay the ultimate sacrifice. And every time we put a uniform on, we are prepared to pay that ultimate sacrifice. Pay homage to those that did on that day and that time. Every day starts out with you telling your loved one that you'll be home that day. And sometimes it doesn't end that way. So please take the time to look around to see those ladies and gentlemen that are wearing uniforms and to remember those that made that sacrifice and are prepared to make that sacrifice every day. I thank God for the opportunity to be here with you today and ask that you keep all public safety in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I also have the privilege of uh, reading the following. At 8.42 on September 11th, 2001, United Airlines Flight 175, a domestic passenger flight, was hijacked by five Al-Qaeda terrorists. The flight scheduled flight plan was from Logan International Airport in Boston, Massachusetts to Los Angeles International Airport in Los Angeles, California, with 65 souls on board. Approximately 30 minutes into the flight, the hijackers forcibly breached the cockpit and overpowered the captain and the first officer. This allowed the lead hijacker, who was a trained pilot, to take over the controls. Flight 175 transponder remained visible on New York Center's radar, which depicted the aircraft deviating from its original flight plan for four minutes before air traffic controllers took notice at 0851 Eastern Standard Time, Eastern Daylight Time, excuse me. Thereafter, air traffic controllers made several unsuccessful attempts to contact the cockpit. Several passengers and crew members aboard made phone calls to family members and relayed information regarding the hijackers and casualties suffered by passengers and crew. Today, we honor the passengers and the crew of Flight 175. 
May God keep them and comfort their families from this point forward. Good morning. My name is Ed Book. I'm the Chief of Police at Santa Fe College, and I'm very honored to be a part of this ceremony. At 8.46 and 40 seconds a.m. on September 11, 2001, Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. American Airlines Flight 11, departing from Boston's Logan International Airport, bound for Los Angeles, had 11 crew members and 81 passengers, including five hijackers, on board. A flight attendant on Flight 11 was able to alert American Airlines that the plane had been hijacked. She reported that the cockpit is not answering and that the hijackers reportedly had a bomb. Two flight attendants and a passenger were stabbed during the hijacking. The passenger, later determined to be Daniel Lewin, formerly served in the Israeli military, and it is thought that he heroically tried to stop the hijacking. Some speculate that he was the first victim of the attacks. Hijackers on Flight 11 flew the airplane into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. The impact occurred between floors 93 and 99. The crash instantly killed hundreds, including all those on board. Almost immediately, emergency responders were sent to the building. Today, we remember those lost. Good morning, everybody. I'm Deputy Chief Joseph Hillhouse with Gainesville Fire Rescue. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. I'd like to go over some quick safety instructions for the actual climb, if you would like to participate in that. First of all, if there's an actual medical emergency, please notify the closest medical responder. Call 911 or face the south end zone and give us the following hand and arm signal so we know that somebody needs medical attention. As we begin the stair climb, if you're participating, please do not think that you must complete the entire workout. Today is about remembering the falling of September 11th. Today, we remember the 110 stories of the World Trade Center that the responders had to climb. These steps are remembered through a stair climb, 14 repetitions from top to bottom of the east side of the stadium. Today, we remember the 343 firefighters lost in the September 11th attacks by completing 25 push-ups between each of the 14 stair climb repetitions with 18 on the last rep to equal 343. Today we remember the 71 law enforcement officers lost in the September 11th attacks by completing five burpees between each of the 14 stair climb repetitions with six on the last rep to equal 71. Throughout the event, you will hear bells timed with significant events of the attack. The bell will be followed by a brief history of each event. In addition, throughout the event, you will hear pre-recorded messages from the public safety speakers about significant events of the September 11th attacks. And we will also have music and videos honoring those lost. As you complete the physical tributes today, you are welcome to join us back in the south end zone. Our last time mark of the significant events will be 1028, signifying the collapse of the North Tower, followed by a moment of silence and dismissal of the honor guard. If you'd like to participate in the stair climb, you can now make your way to the east side of the stadium to join the firefighters. Thank you. It's not easy to forget that day for sure. We were headed to school and I got a call from my principal 
at Westwood Middle School telling us this had happened and we hadn't seen the news yet so we we really didn't know what was going on in the in the country so we went to school and we were told not to tell the children what was happening not to turn on our TVs to make sure that the children didn't know what was going on and there was no alarm throughout the school and to have their parents then be responsible at the end of the day for letting them know what was happening uh, in our country. Commemorating 9-11 helps us for at least one day of a year to know how as a country we came together in times of need and disaster and it is a reminder to us that, that we are one country and that we can work together in, in times of need and that we should be doing that every day and not just on, on the commemoration of 9-11. Good morning. My name is Joel DeCourcy, Jr. I'm the Undersheriff of the Lodge County Sheriff's Office. At 8.50, Flight 77 was hijacked. American Airline Flight 77 was scheduled domestic transcontinental passenger flight from Washington Dulles International Airport to Dulles, Virginia, to Los Angeles International Airport in Los Angeles, California. Flight 77 had 64 souls, including six crew members, on board. The Boeing 757 223 aircraft serving the flight was hijacked by men affiliated with Al Qaeda on morning of September 11, 2021, 2001. Less than 35 minutes into the flight, hijackers stormed the cockpit and forced the passengers, crew, and pilot to the rear of the aircraft. One of the hijackers, who was trained as a pilot, assumed control of the flight. Unknown to the hijackers, passengers aboard made telephone calls to friends and family and relayed information on the hijacking. Today, was remembering, we are remembering the bravery of the passengers and crew of Flight 77. At 9.03 and two seconds on September 11, 2001, Flight 175 crashed into the South Tower. Flight 175, a Boeing 767-200 aircraft was deliberately crashed into the South Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City, killing all 65 aboard and an unknown number in the building's impact zone. Today, we remember those we lost. My memories of 9-11 are forever etched into my mind and my heart. I was teaching middle school at the time. I had the first block uh, free for planning and always had the news on and, and uh, all of a sudden saw something uh, that a plane had hit the, the World Trade Center and I didn't think much about it. I thought what an unfortunate accident. Well as I watched the news unfold and it became uh, clear that we were under attack and uh, that, that uh, many lives are being lost, uh, we saw the first building come down. Um, about a minute before my first class of the day came in, I watched the second tower fall. Uh, I was devastated, I was heartbroken, I was terrified. Um, and I knew I had to teach these students of mine in my American history class that this would be a day that would forever change our world and would forever change them. Uh, I still have those students uh, get in touch with me all these years later and let them, let me know how uh, much that impacted them and how much that changed their lives. And so it's uh, so important that we remember and commemorate uh, the events of that day, the lives that were lost, um, continue to show the respect for the first responders who uh, were running into the building as everyone else was trying to run out, uh, and all of the uh, families and, and individuals who are still being impacted by uh, those events, uh, who are still suffering health issues, mental health, physical health issues, uh, and, and who still need our support and care. Uh, so uh, to all of you, to all the first responders, uh, thank you. Uh, we honor and, and, and appreciate your commitment and your sacrifice, uh, and we have to continue remembering how much the events of 9-11 have completely transformed our country and our world. I was getting ready for work that morning, and I was looking at the Good Morning America, and I noticed that a plane had hit one of the towers. I thought that was unusual. 
Uh, been in law enforcement at that time over 20, well, 15, 20 years, and never seen anything like that. And then the second uh, plane hit the tower, I knew that was, it wasn't coincidental. So I knew something was happening. Uh, came to the office and uh, told them that we were, uh, meaning the United States was possibly under attack. Uh, that, that really infuriated me because I'd never seen anything like that before, never experienced that. In law enforcement, we are on domestic soil and never seen that in the, on the soil other than uh, Oklahoma bombing. But something that happened of that magnitude, it really impacted our lives, my life, and law enforcement and first responders uh, for years to come. It's very important not to forget the men and women on 9-11 that lost their lives in both of those towers and the planes. So therefore, it's, uh, it's going to be near and dear. 36 years of law enforcement, never seen or experienced anything like that before, and hopefully never again. Uh, law enforcement is a very important. First responders are very important. So therefore, it really means a lot to me to make sure that we keep those folks uh, that died, those citizens, uh, in our memories forever. On 9-11, I was a, a rookie police chief in West Lafayette, Indiana at Purdue University. And I remember my dispatcher walking into the office and saying, an airplane's hit the tower in New York City and the news media's covering it. I walked into dispatch and you know, shortly thereafter, all of us kind of witnessed that second a plane hit the tower and we immediately knew that we were under attack. At Purdue, we had an airport and uh, my first thoughts were about we had student pilots, uh, we had them up in the air, and what was gonna happen next. I remember having a, what I would refer to as a lively discussion with members of the FAA and the tower about bringing those planes down uh, carefully and what we discussed with the student pilots that were in the air and uh, how those planes landed safely at Purdue. You know, as all of us feel, this was an attack on America. This was. This was my generation's um, war, so to speak, and uh, the war was brought to us. And we had a responsibility to react, and uh, for all those people that were tragically murdered in New York and in Pennsylvania, we still have a responsibility. On 9-11, what I recollect at that moment, I was sitting in a lounge at my um, car dealership. I was having my car serviced and I was watching TV and unfortunately what I watched was horrific. It was horrifying. Um, immediately I thought it was surreal. I you know, wasn't really connecting with the severity of it all. And then of course it was in fact as real as it could be. Uh, we lost close to 3,000 of our family members in this country. Uh, and so that uh, is just very hard to reflect on. But the reality of it is that on 9-11 annually, now for the last 21 years or so, we have looked back and we've remembered uh, the lives lost, the selflessness, um, the perseverance, um, just how vulnerable life is for each of us. Um, it was particularly um, horrific for me and my family because my brother worked in the Pentagon uh, and he and the general that he worked for, my brother's a retired colonel, he worked for a general, they had stepped out of their office area in the Pentagon uh, to go to a meeting. Um, when the Pentagon was hit, they lost several of their office mates. Um, you know, in that um, situation. And so for a long time on that day, we did not know where my brother was. And so for my family, um, going through those moments of just not knowing was very, very um, painful. It was very painful. Um, but again, we commemorate and we memorialize uh, every year this time because we are all vulnerable, but we all persevere in the end. And I think when I, I think about what happened um, and I look at our country today. It shows our strength, um, even in times of vulnerability. Uh, it shows the ability for us to gather and collect ourselves and just be there for each other. And so that 
is how I reflect on 9-11 to all those families who lost and to this country who has uh, been resilient uh, and now even more ready to face the evil that is out there. Good morning. I'm Newberry Fire Chief Mike Vogel. At 0928 on September 11th, 2001, United Airlines Flight 93, a domestic scheduled passenger flight, was hijacked by four Al-Qaeda terrorists. The aircraft, a Boeing 747-222, was flying United Airlines' daily scheduled morning flight from Newark International Airport in New Jersey to San Francisco International Airport in California. Hijackers stormed the aircraft cockpit 46 minutes after takeoff. The captain and first officer struggled with the hijackers, which was transmitted to air traffic control. Thinking quickly, the pilots took measures, such as deactivating the autopilot to hinder the hijackers. While hijackers were taking control of the plane, several passengers and flight attendants learned from phone calls that suicide attacks had already been made by hijacker airlines on the World Trade Center in New York City and the Pentagon in Arlington County, Virginia. Rather than seed control of the plane, many of the passengers attempted to retake it from the hijackers. Today, we remember the bravery of the passengers and crew of Flight 93. At 0937 hours on September 11th, 2001, American Airline Flight 77 was banked sharply and deliberately crashed into the Pentagon in Arlington County, Virginia at over 400 miles per hour, killing all 64 aboard and another 125 in the building. The hijackers crashed the aircraft into the western side of the Pentagon, the institution of the Department of Defense which normally holds close to 26,000 employees. Within minutes, the first fire companies arrived Rescue efforts begin immediately after the crash. Almost all the successful rescuers of survivors occurred within the half hour of the impact. The impact severely damaged an area of the Pentagon and caused a large fire that took several days to extinguish. A portion of the building collapsed. The amount of time between impact and collapse coupled with the rescue efforts of numerous fire departments law enforcement personnel, and military stationed at the Pentagon, allowed everyone on the fourth and fifth levels to evacuate safely before the structure collapsed. On the day of the attacks, the Department of Defense official considered moving their command operations to a backup facility in Pennsylvania. Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld insisted he remained at the Pentagon the National Military Command Center continued to operate at the Pentagon, even as smoke entered the facilities. Engineers and building managers manipulated the ventilation and other building systems that st still function to draw smoke out and bring fresh air in. During a press conference held inside the Pentagon at 1842 hours, Mr. Runfield announced the Pentagon's functioning. It will be in business tomorrow. The damaged section of the Pentagon was rebuilt in 2002. The 184 victims of the attack are memorialized in a Pentagon memorial adjacent to the crash site. The 1.93 acre park contains a bench of each of the victims arranged according to their birth, ranging from 1930 to 1998. Today, we remember those lost and the tenacity of our first responders and military. Thank you. I actually had an eye doctor appointment the morning of September 11th and when I got into my truck to head to the courthouse for work and I turned on the radio everything was the news and they were talking about a plane had hit one of the World Trade Center towers and um, as I was driving into the office a second plane hit and I think it was at that time that I knew as probably everybody else did that this was much more than just an accident and uh, when we got when I got to the office everybody was just surrounded the TV watching the news for hours I think it's an important day to remember not only to remember the lives lost on that day but to remember 
all the sacrifices uh, moving forward that we have made as um, in this country and in other countries as a result. On September the 11th, 2001, 21 years ago, there was an attack on American soil. At that time, I was assigned as a company officer, Howard County, Maryland, Special Operations, part of our urban search and rescue team, when approximately 15 minutes before 9 o'clock, there was an attack the first attack. Over the course of approximately an hour to shortly after 10 a.m., four planes, three locations, 19 attackers, and almost 3,000 souls, over 400 of which were first responders. Over the course of the years, there have been many more. But what I can tell you is that day, first we were stunned. It's like being punched in the mouth. You heard that being, you've heard that said. Then what are you going to do? Together with my colleagues, we felt focused. We felt ready. What can we do? Where can we go? How can we, how can we help? Everyone wanted to help. I'm so proud. It galvanized our nation. There was no left. There was no right. Our president then, President Bush, I can't imagine getting that message, but there was a clear direction. If you attack Americans, there is a price to pay. So I'm proud to be a first responder. I was proud then, and I'm proud now, and I vowed never to forget. After we've lost those colleagues, there's over a, almost a half a million people that have been affected by the toxic environment, those that helped clean out, those that, the, the first responders. But I'm proud today that we have a community that remembers. I hope you remember. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Gainesville Fire Rescue Deputy Chief Joseph Hillhouse. As the South Tower of the World Trade Center damaged by the impact of Flight 175, continued to burn. Occupants trapped in the upper floors of the South Tower provided information about the conditions to 911 dispatchers. At 9.37 a.m., an occupant on the 105th floor of the South Tower reported that floors beneath him, quoted as in the 90th something floor, had collapsed. The New York City Police Department Aviation Unit also relayed information about the deteriorating conditions of the building to police commanders. At 9.52 a.m., NYPD Aviation Unit reported over the radio that large pieces may be falling from the top of World Trade Center Building 2. Large pieces are hanging up there. With the warnings, the NYPD issued orders for its officers to evacuate. During the emergency response, there was minimal communication between NYPD and FDNY, and overwhelmed 911 dispatchers did not pass along this information to FDNY commanders on scene. At 9.59 a.m., the South Tower collapsed, 56 minutes after being struck. Today, we remember the lives lost during this tragic attack and the bravery of the first responders who worked till the end to evacuate survivors. Good morning, I'm Bart Knowles, University of Florida Police. Despite the valiant efforts of the passengers and crew of United Airlines Flight 93, the plane under the control of a hijacker, trained as a pilot, was diverted back towards the East Coast in the direction of Washington, D.C. with the intended target, the U.S. Capitol Building. The plane eventually crashed in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, following an attempt by passengers and crew to regain control of the plane from the hijackers. Rather than cede control of the plane, many of the passengers attempted to retake it from the hijackers. During the struggle, 
The plane crashed into a field near a reclaimed strip mine near Stony Creek Township near Indian Lake, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, 130 miles northwest of Washington, D.C. All 44 people on board were killed, including the hijackers. Of the four aircraft hijacked on September 11, 2001, United Airlines Flight 93 was the only aircraft that did not reach the hijackers' intended target. Today, we remember the lives, the passengers and crew of Flight 93, for their lives so others might live. On the morning of September 11, 2001, I was actually a firefighter with the Lachua County Fire Rescue, and I was involved in the union, and we were doing collective bargaining negotiations at the county administration building. I'll never forget when one of the HR personnel came in and interrupted our meeting and said that the World Trade Center had just been hit by an airplane. Uh, back then we had the large televisions that were on the big moving carts and so we moved one of those televisions with the moving cart actually into the negotiating room just kind of keep an eye out on what was going on as this world news was kind of unveiling as we watched it. And then we saw the second plane hit the second tower. We knew then that there was something that was going on that was much less of an accident that had taken place but much more of a terrorist action that had taken. From that point on we really were glued to the television for the next 30 or 40 minutes. I called my wife who was at home with our newborn child, told her what was going on, asked her if she was watching the news, and she was. From that point forward, Alachua County Fire Rescue changed forever. Uh, that weekend and in the subsequent weeks, we locked down all of our stations, we locked all of our vehicles up. We didn't know what was going to be next. As a university town, we were certainly concerned that we would be impacted by these, these potential terrorist actions that were taking place. For me, 9-11 really is a time that we remember. We remember all the sacrifices that were made by those firefighters, by, that law, by those law enforcement officers. And it's a day of reflection that we recognize the ultimate sacrifice that those men and women made on that faithful day. It also is a time just really of solemnness where we all gather together unified. You know, in this day and age when our, when our nation is really so divided, that was a time when our nation really came together and was united. And so on this day, 9-11, we unite as a nation together. On 9-11, uh, when the attack on the Twin Towers occurred, um, I was in bed uh, watching the Today Show. And I remember seeing them cut away and saying that a plane had just crashed into the, one of the towers. And, you know, sitting there thinking about the people that might be injured and what's going on with it. And the newscasters were going through it. And they finally got to the point where a second plane hit it, the tower. And at that point, uh, they rec recognized that this was some type of coordinated attack. And so I, I was mesmerized, quite frankly, by um, all the news reporting that day and kind of greatly on the news media to keep us informed. Uh, going to work later, uh, we had to put things in perspective locally, you know. Was this an isolated incident? Was this the beginning of a series of attacks? So we had to make sure that our folks were cognizant of our, our really, our, our responsibilities locally and what we were going to do to make sure that our community stayed safe. Uh, later, we found out the number of folks that uh, had died and perished during the uh, attack, uh, particularly those public safety officials uh, and personnel that died, uh, firefighters, police officers. And, you know, it, it brung home the point that we wanted to emphasize to all of our people. You know, people in public safety are the ones that put the uniforms on every day. And when they step out the door, they know that they may not return home. And for a large number of people that day, public safety and civilians, they didn't return home that day. And that's something that we entrench into our folks, even today, that anytime you don that uniform, you step outside. Uh, for some folks, you become representative of something that they don't care for. They demonize police officers and demonize firefighters at times. But the simple fact is that when everybody else is running out, we are the chosen few to run in. Good morning. I'm Alachua County Fire Rescue Deputy Chief Jeff Taylor. 
After the South Tower collapsed, NYPD helicopters relayed information about the deteriorating conditions of the North Tower. At 10.20 a.m., the NYPD aviation unit reported that the top of the tower might be leaning, and a minute later reported that the North Tower is buckling on the southwest corner and leaning to the south. At 10.28 a.m., the aviation unit reported that the roof is going to come down very shortly, and indeed, the North Tower collapsed immediately thereafter at 10.28 a.m. after burning for 102 minutes. After the South Tower collapsed, FDNY commanders issued orders for firefighters in the North Tower to evacuate. Due to radio communications problems, firefighters inside the towers did not hear the evacuation order from their supervisors on the scene, and most were unaware that the other tower had collapsed. 343 firefighters died in the Twin Towers as a result of the collapse of the buildings. No one was able to escape the North Tower from the impact zone or above, as all stairwells and elevator shafts on those floors were destroyed or blocked. The collapsing towers generated enormous clouds of debris and dust that enveloped lower Manhattan. Light dust reached as far as the Empire State Building, located 2.93 miles away. Today we remember those lost in one of the deadliest attacks on American soil. We pay tribute to the 343 firefighters and 71 law enforcement officers who gave all to their profession to protect and serve. Please join me in a moment of silence as we remember those who gave all on September 11th, 2001. My name is Captain Anthony Farrar and I represent the Gainesville Police Department and Chief Lonnie Scott. For those of you that 9-11-2001 were a part of your life, thank you very much for joining us in today's tribute. And for those of you that 9-11 is just a memory in a history book or something that you watch in a documentary, thank you for assisting us in this remembrance as well. Today's events have concluded and we appreciate each and every one of you who made the climb. God bless.